Hello, my peeps. And welcome to another Power Packed Phillips Podcast. Thank you. Thank you very much. I believe that we have some information for you. If you have a hankering for Girl Scout cookies, you better hurry up. Number one, the number one redhead in the whole wide world is almost to her goal. And number two, you only have about a week and a half that you can still purchase Girl Scout cookies anywhere across the state of Florida. Because a week and a half from now, they'll be gone and you won't be able to buy any until next year. All right, the bell tells us we are ready to get started. Yes, that would be me crying because they keep on winning and I'm going to keep on drinking my hair. All right, this is going to be lesson 9.2, multiplying polynomials, part two. Lesson 9.2, multiplying polynomials, part two. If you take a look at our problem here on the screen, we have an expression. There is no equal sign. We're asked to find the product. That means we're going to multiply them together. But before we do that, let's break down what's going on. We have one, two, three terms. So this would be a trinomial. Over here, we have two terms. That would be a binomial. Remember, there's an easy way to keep track of it. A monomial is like a monocycle, one term. A binomial is like a bicycle, two terms, two tires. A trinomial, which we have right here, three terms, three wheels. All right, before we work out the problem, I'm going to rewrite the problem using the commutative property. Oh, come on, the commutative property is so easy. Don't boo. So I'm going to take the binomial, which is at the end of our problem, and I'm going to put it at the front. I'm going to take the trinomial, which is at the front of our problem, and I'm going to put it at the back. The commutative property, that's easy. I'm just rewriting the property, rewriting the problem, excuse me, with the commutative property because this is going to make it easier to do. So now we are going to use the distributive property. So how do we use the distributive property here? Easy. We are going to distribute the 3B with everything in the parentheses over here to the right. We're going to distribute the 3b with all of these terms. So I'm going to cover up the negative 4, the minus 4, and come back to that later. So let's start distributing. I'm going to distribute 3b with b squared. Remember that there is a parenthesis over here that's hiding underneath my polygon. But there was a parenthesis right there, so I am going to multiply. So I have 3b times b squared. Remember, our friendly ghost, that's an exponent of 1 right there. So I am going to add my coefficient, another friendly ghost. Man, it's like a haunted house. They're just everywhere. 3 times 1 gives me 3. 
I'm going to add the exponents. 1 plus 2 gives me 3. So I get 3b cubed. Now what am I going to do? I'm just going to put a little line through this term so I know they used it. And I'm going to distribute 3b with positive 6b. So again, I have 3b times 6b. I have a friendly ghost, exponent of 1. Friendly ghost, exponent of 1. 3 times 6 gives me 18. b1 plus b1 gives me b squared. The next thing I'm going to do is distribute 3b with negative 7. 3 times negative 7 gives me negative 21. And my dog follows me everywhere I go, or I bring over the variable b. All right, so what are we going to do next? Hang in there. Don't have a lot more to do. We're going to distribute the negative 4 with the first set of parentheses. So I'm going to distribute negative 4 with the parentheses right here. So I have negative 4 times b squared. I believe I have a ghost sighting invisible coefficient of 1. Negative 4 times 1 gives me negative 4. And my b squared, or my dog, follows me everywhere I go. Oh my gosh, doesn't he just melt your heart? Now I'm going to distribute negative 4 with positive 6b. Negative 4 times 6 is negative 24. And the dog follows you everywhere you go, or the variable b. Distribute. Ooh, that would be an oopsie by Mr. Phillips, but you're not paying attention. I'm going to distribute the negative 4 with the negative 7. Negative 4 times negative 7 is positive 28. So now that we are all done with distributing, ta -da! we're going to list all the answers that we got from distributing. So here's all of our answers that we got from distributing. Notice that this is a b cubed. I don't have any other b cubes, so I gave that a square. I have a b to the second power. A b to the second power, I gave those triangles. A b, or b to the first power, I gave those hearts. And I have a number all by itself, a constant, so that I gave that a star. Now what are we going to do? We're going to give all these terms some TLC. Oh, wait a second. That's not what I meant to write. We're going to give all these terms some CLT. CLT? You don't know what CLT means? Oh my gosh, come on. CLT means combine like terms. Give them some CLT, combine like terms. So I'm going to take my two triangles, and I'm going to combine them. Remember, we are done multiplying. Now that we're giving them some CLT, we're just adding. We're just adding. So I have 18b squared plus negative 4b squared. 18 is a spy. 18 and a negative 4 gives me 14. My dog, or b squared, I just copy. Oh, sorry, wrong button. My dog, b squared, follows me everywhere I go. Remember, I'm giving them some CLT. I'm going to combine the b's. Negative 21 and negative 24, I'm adding them. A negative 21 and a negative 24 gives me negative 45. My dog, which is b, follows me everywhere I go. Now, do not combine these. They cannot be combined. Why? They are not like terms. I could multiply them, but I'm trying to combine them by adding, so I can't do anything. So, my solution, 
is right here. 3b cubed plus 14b squared minus 45b plus 28. Remember, I write my answer with my exponents in order from biggest to smallest. Exponent 3, exponent 2, here's Casper. Whoops, sorry Casper. There's Casper, our friendly ghost. That's an exponent of 1, and this has no exponent. So, distributing is really not that difficult. It just takes a couple minutes and take your time because it's easy to make a lot of mistakes. But if you channel your inner, oh, sorry, I hate to do this, Miami Heat, then you should be okay. Goodbye.